Good morning. We'll continue with the Maimur. We started the uh, we started off yesterday. Uh Hashem saw the Israel, the Jewish people saw the mighty arm that God did in uh Mitzrayim. So uh Dr. Rebbe is explaining in this Maimur, it's a Maimur of Pasha's Bisharach associated with Tzias Mitzrayim. So, uh, in the previous chapter, we learned that Shem Havaya, there is Shem Havaya, the name of Havaya is, is the Letato, lower one, and there is a higher one, Shem Havaya the Le'elo, the supernal Shem Havaya. The Letato, the lower one, is associated with the creation of the world, has a connection with the creation of the world, and Avayi the Le'elo is concealed within the essence of God. So one is connected with the creation of the world, one is concealed. The end of this, at the end of this uh, paragraph, the last one that we were discussing, we spoke about power. Power said, Dati One of the things he tells Moshe Rabbeinu, I don't know God. So what, what, does he, what, what did he meant by it? So it says, he didn't know Avayda Leila, because Avayda Leila, the upper Avaya, doesn't really have connection with the world. He didn't know that one. Avayda Leila, Tato Power knew, that's why he said many times he referenced to, to God. But Avayda Leila didn't know, because it's a level, supernal Yud Kevav K, it's a level that is not associated with the world. And, and now we're going to discuss the godly revelation that took place in Yitzhak Mitzrayim and during the Exodus which was a Avaya Galeo, the supernal Avaya, the one that Pao said that I didn't know, that exactly was the level that was used and revealed in Yitzhak Mitzrayim at the time of, of, uh, of the Exodus. And we're going to see the, a deeper meaning on the verse, Vayari Sora Sarada Gedeo, the destroyer saw the mighty arm. So in the text it says, Yitzhak Mitzrayim, and as they were going out of Mitzrayim, it says, Vayar Yisrael Esar Dagdero Shosar Vay Mitzrayim. The Jewish people saw the mighty arm of the mighty hand that Asher also Vay Mitzrayim, that Avay did in Mitzrayim. Pirush, what does it mean? Asher also Avay, that Avay did the Le'elo. Not just Avay the Le'etato, rather Avay the Le'elo, the supernal name of Avay was doing in Mitzrayim. Aledei Bechinas Mitzrayim. So, so the explanation of it is like this. In Kriyas Yamsu, in the splitting of the sea, it says, The Jewish people saw what Havai was doing in Mitzrayim. What is the meaning? What, what's the meaning right well, up till now? They didn't see what was going on in Mitzrayim, the ten plagues, the destruction that came down to Mitzrayim. The meaning is then they had a new perception, a new understanding, new grasping that they didn't have up till now. Now they have a new asog, a new understanding in the name of Avayi By itself, it's, it's, we said Avayi is associated with Amudiskasi, with the concealed world. So they shouldn't have any kind of um, understanding what it means. Like Pao himself said, I don't know Avayi. Why? Because it's something that is nelam, it's concealed in its very essence, and it's not revealed in the world of Vaidalel. So, beside the knowing, or beside the knowledge about this level, Vaidalel is a Vaidalatat. Beside, no, beside knowing the level, they now perceived it, they now grasped it, they now were able to grasp Vaidalel, the supernal name of Avaya, <laughs> during the Itzias Mitzrayim. So that's why it says, Vayari Sol Esayed HaGedol. Now we saw, saw the mighty arm. And another thing is that they were capable of, of figuring out, suddenly they realized how they can so to speak, activate 
this name, meaning they're able to see what causes this name to be revealed. And what was it? The work of the lower ones, what they that what they were involved with down here, down there in Mitzrayim, able to tap into the, to, to the supernal name of Avai. What was what what they were involved with? Brick and mortar. They're involved in brick and mortar. So we're going to see soon what does that mean? How they're able to tap into such a level and not just to tap into it, but also to grasp it. So it says famous statement in the Zoyar, it says Eodel lo Salikva Eodel Salikva in Eero Mevachinle. If you take a log of wood and you try to uh you try to set it on fire and it doesn't catch fire because it's too big, so you have to chop it to smaller pieces so it catches uh, wood. So it catches fire, right? So a big log of wood it wouldn't catch fire unless you chop it down. So the Zal says the same thing in Gufa, a body, that the light of the Nisham does not penetrate into the body, you also have to, uh, you, have to you also have to, so to speak, chop it down. What does that mean? In order for the, for, for the fire to catch in, you have to chop it into small pieces. Similarly, by breaking the body, <laughs> crushing the body, soon see what, it, what crushing the body means. By crushing the body, the godly light now shines in the in the material in the physical body. So what happened in Mitzrayim? There was they worked what we call avodas porich. Porich means that they they worked in a back breaking labor. They didn't just work. They they were um, enslaved. They worked extremely hard. They were crushed. It's Levnish heart their heart was crushed and from the uh, from the this tremendous uh, uh, harsh labor. It says they cried out to God the time of constraint, the complete chuva, I mean Ametsava Dechak the time of constraint and oppression, they were in the ultimate nullification at that at that point so it says in a few uh, expressions in the Torah Vatal Shavosam that their cry came out Hashem so physically and emotionally mentally psychologically all the levels that you can think of they were crushed the Jewish people were crushed in in Mitzrayim it says, if you want to tap into a vital leila, if you if you want to tap into a level that was revealed at the time of the splitting of the sea, which is the supernal avai, the essence of God, the what we call a the concealed level of godliness, if that can happen. Sumra refraining from evil, so we're going to see what it means. In order to get to reach to Avaida Leila, it's not enough to do Aseito, to do the mitzvahs, to do all the positive commandments. Rather, you also have to have nullification of yourself, your desires, by what, how is the nullification being expressed, that you, you're not doing negative things. The don't do's, you're also refraining. So that, that's the Sumerah. As Toiv is, is beautiful, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough means that it's not enough to reach to Avaidele. If you want to reach Avaidele Ela, you have to have also Sumerah. And what is, why? Why is it that you have to have also a refraining from evil, the don't do's? Also, have to be very strong that you put away your yourself, your, your desires, your passions. And you're not doing what you're not supposed to do. The reason to the reason for this is, what is what is the avoid of sumera? Ki lav kaidim lo impu shavoid shelav meni asatzim v'dov shlil sumera ger shoshon v'dov shlil. So he says you have avoid of love and you have avoid of hen. Avoid of love is the don't do's. Avoid of hen is the do's. So he tells us the avoid of love, preventing yourself from doing something negative. Sumerah 
reaches a higher level than the Avedah of Hain. Okay? Why? Because the, the, the serving Hashem with Hain, with all the positive commandments, you, what do you do? You are creating, every time you do a mitzvah, put in a filling, you daven, you learn, all these do's mitzvahs, everything that is under the 248 positive commandment, You're, you are now making a vessel for a godly light to, to shine in. Creating a vessel for the godly light. So, so at this type of, of service is creating that you have light enclosed in vessels. This light, godly light. You did the mitzvah, you created now a kli, a vessel to contain that light. But that's through the hain, the positive mitzvahs. But through the avoid of love, of not doing something that you wanted to do, you are tapping into and you draw down light that is above enclosement in vessels. So through a positive mitzvah, I'm creating a light that is enclosed in vessels. Through an, a negative commitment, not doing something that I wanted to do, holding myself back, now I'm bringing light to the world that is not enclosed in vessels. Meaning that it's a much greater light. That's why it's not enclosed in vessels. Why? Because according to the root of the mitzvah, the root of the don't do's are, is higher than the root of do's. And they don't even have vessels to contain them because the root is higher. That's the, the famous expression, shev uh, v'altase. means that sometimes you sit and don't do anything and your reward is greater. Just by um, biting, uh, biting your lips or not saying something you want to say, and not doing something you wanted to do, not eating something you wanted to eat, or not uh, thinking about something you wanted to think about. So, that alone can lead to a much greater revelation in the world. That's what it says in the Zoya, there's a postuk in uh, Pasha Shmois, in the, the book of Shmois, book of, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 15. Says over there, Zeshmi Leilom with a Zichri Leder over there. This is my name forever, and this is my remembrance for, for eternity, for all generations. So Shmi with Yud K, my name with the name of God with Yud K comes out to be 365. Zichri with the Vav K comes together to 248. Positive mitzvahs. What, he wants, what does he want to say by that? Tikkun Zaya. Shmi with the, the Yud K with 15. Yud K is 15. Yud and Hey together is 15. So Shmi and Yud K comes to 365. Vav K with 248 comes uh, to Zichri. Zichri with Vav Hey. So you take 200 and Zichri is 7. Chaf. Zayin Chaf Reish Yud and Vav Hey together comes out to 248 which represents a positive commandment. What does it mean? The, the root of 365 don't do's is connected with the Yud K by the first two letters in the name of God and the Zichri which is with the Vav K with the second uh, set of letters of God's name comes out to be 248 so we, we see the superiority of uh, the, the don't do's, the 365. So we learned that, it in, that you cannot reach the, the, the level. We are unable to reach the level that the Jewish people were able to reach in the time of, of the Exodus, the time of the splitting of the sea, which is the level is called Avai de Leilo, the supernal Yud K Vav K, without the the sumerah, without the don't do's. Sumerah is what leads to it. The don't don't do it. Refrain from evil. Three hundred sixty-five negative commandments. If, if you just sit and you don't do them, that leads to a greater revelation than than the do's. Now we saw so the letato in the text. 
וביסרוסו דלתתו שצמצם את עצמו לי איסור מרע. What happens when you don't do something? You have to have an arousal from below. שצמצם את עצמו, that you contracted your own self not to do something, not to do the סור Now so, what has happened above? Bechinas yud, bechinas tzimtzum. If you're contracting yourself down here, you created above also contraction. The yud, the tzimtzum, the contraction of the yud, the, the first letter in the name of God. Uva asa toiv, and when you do good, you bechinas is pashtus. What is asa, do good, the ex- expansion, you're doing something, you're actively doing something. Like giving tzedakah. What happens above? Ispashtus, exactly what happens below him happens above. Expansion down here, expansion above. And contraction down here causes contraction above. So, so, so the don't do's is conquering your own self, conquering your, your inclination, your instinctiveness, your impulsiveness, your desires, holding them back. So creating and holding back down upstairs. So Hashem, what happens down upstairs? Contraction. From exp- contraction of, of, instead of expansion, contraction. And that it's not limited. Now Hashem would, would, would this, the, decide again to wanting the world. Causing Hashem to, to want the world. Every time somebody does sumara, refraining from evil, causes Hashem a new desire in the world. Through our Vedas, through the asset of doing good, creating expansion. And he wants to, you're creating, you're doing the mitzvahs, you're going out of yourself, you're creating, you're doing something, you're creating the letter hey. So the don't do's create the letter yud, the, the, the do's create the letter hey. It takes the expansion to, that the light that comes into the world, especially through the mitzvah of tzedakah, which is, uh, presents even a greater expansion of giving, to, to uh, give life to those that don't have. So the, the Pasuk says, Vayigo Esavai, they saw God. Vayigo Esavai, uh, what is Avai, Avai de Letato, the lower one. And then it says, Vayaminu Ba'avai. So start Vayigo, they, they saw it, or they feared it. Vayigo could mean two ways, either they saw it or they feared it, fearing something. But on simple meaning, Vayi was our Mr. Shem. The nation saw God. That's reference to Avai de Latato. Then the Pasuk says, Vaya minu ba Shem, Vaishavdo, Vaminu ba Vaye. So Vaminu ba Vaye is referring to Avai de Leil. So we're going to see, uh, actually answer a question that we asked in the beginning of the Mimer on part one. We asked, why uh, in in the writing of the of the verse it says first vayu and then vayamin why vayu comes before vayamin why seeing why the nation seeing god comes before vayaminu bavai seemingly the need for belief faith is comes before and the, the belief comes when there's no understanding. When it's something that you can't understand, so you need the faith. You need the muna. That is above understanding. So we're going to see that the yira, from the, the fear, is from avai de letato. And afterwards he adds a higher level, which is faith in avai de leilo, in the supernal avai. The Jewish people saw the mighty arm, the mighty hand of God through the splitting of the sea. The Apostle says, The Jewish people saw the mighty hand of God, that he saw that he did in Mitzrayim. That reference to the splitting of the sea, which the following verses explain the, the, uh, how the water was standing as a wall, the water became as a wall from the right to the left. Then the Jewish people saw uh, the Egyptians dead 
at the at the uh, seashore. Vayar is all as Harda Gedol. They saw the mighty arm. Vayosim is Hayom lecharovo. Then it says that Hashem, the P.S. Yamsuf, the Hashem turned the sea to be a dry land. That's the meaning. Vayosim is Hayom. He turned the sea to be dry land. What is Yam? Yam ubechina samu de iskasio. The the uh, ocean is the concealed world. It's hard to see what's uh, beneath, what's inside the ocean. It's hard to see what's there. So anything you see in the water, whatever, wherever the water is, the body of water, especially the ocean, the sea is called alma de iskasio. It says komeshesh by bosho. Whatever you see in the Abosha, in the dry land, exists in the sea. The Gemara in Chulin, 127, explains over there, Whatever you see in the dry land, you have in the ocean. So you have, you have two levels. You have Yam and you have Abosha. Yam is the sea, the concealed, and Abosha is the dry land, the revealed. What happened in Kias Yamsuf? In the splitting of the sea, we have Hofach Yom Le'abosha. He transformed Amodis Kasyo to Amodis God. He, he, God transformed the, the concealed world to be a revealed world. And when the Jewish people see how Hashem turned the sea into a dry land, the concealed into the revealed. There was no, there was no moist. It's completely dry. Charova is not just dry. It's like dry, dry. There's no lachluch. There's nothing, nothing, uh, no liquid was not, not even moist. Nothing moist there. That the ocean split and they see the dry land. And they believed in Avayah. Now they, what does that mean? They Aminu Ba'avayah. The Jewish people saw at the splitting of the sea. And now they had the faith in the possibility of the revelation of Avayah the Leila, the supernal name of God. Although its essence is concealment. What is the Avai the Leila, the Supernal Avai is concealment, which is above a revelation of the world, but nevertheless, even this level can be revealed. Like the transformation of concealment to revelation at the time of the splitting of the sea. But the fact that they had this suddenly recognition that this is possible. And this happened through the splitting of the sea. The, the, uh, this Avayi was revealed in their souls. It says that Aminu Basham, it was in a state of Emunah, a faith. Emuna, emuna is something that is encompassing. It's not a true understanding and grasping. But nevertheless, even the Makif is called, even the, the encompassing light is light. It's Gilu, it's revelation. Something that is not, that's not even coming in, in an encompassing way. You can't even believe in it because you don't see it. Because you have no... There's nothing there. There's nothing to believe in. It's not possible even to believe in something that is completely not even encompassing. That's the meaning that the people, the Jewish people saw Havaye Vayaminu Bava and they believed that. If, if, if they see what's to believe, you're seeing it. So the meaning of here, Vayiru es Havaye, they saw the low name of God. Vayiru Aino Avaydele Tatu, exposed to the lower name. Amadis God of the revealed world. The way the name of Ash, uh, the name the name of Yud K, Vav K, the name of God is enclosed in the world. That's they saw. Shubichinas Hasogu, something that you can understand. And you can have, you can fear it, you can see it. You can at least be ashamed, be ashamed of it when it's revealed. Like someone that sees the king. 
can have uh, it can have uh, awe of, of the king it can have uh, embarrassment of the king when is the when is the arousal of fear comes out when it's revealed in front of you so when the king is revealed to his people then the the nation might be shy of the king and fear the, fear the king but when the king is hidden in his chamber then the people are not fearing him they don't see him so when the, the nation saw god it was the lower the lower name of, of hashem amud is god the revealed world this level was revealed in the world was felt in the world and this level they they were able to perceive by standing of the sea they were aroused with with awe of god and to believing in Avaya, that was referring to the higher level, the concealed, the concealed world. It's not something that is can be seen. And the only thing you can have is emuna, is faith. So Yira, they had because of Avaya de la Tato, because the revelation of Avaya de la Tato, they saw. And they, they were aroused with fear, with awe. Of the Muna and the faith they had because of, of, of Ayyad Now they perceive that it's possible and they had uh, a Muna. And says, in order to have the God that is the great, the Gibor, the strong, the mighty, the Neuro, the, the fearful. In order to have fearful, it says the Veha Neuro is written with a Vav, meaning Vav always represents a flow, Amshacha. In order for you to have fear, you have to have Amshacha. It needs to come down. You need to see something to fear it. When it's concealed, no one fears anything. So when it's hidden, now when it's in, in front of your eyes, there's fear. So the same thing above. In order for in order for Hashem to be called Neuro, it's only through his to through revelation. We can call Hashem fearful and it's and we need to have a revelation. So the Rebbe Rashab explained and his teaching Tafri Samachva. Anyhow, Mesha Avdoi. That's the Pasik says Vaminu Ba Hashem. They also believed in Moshe. So how do we... There was a question that was asked in Teras Chaim in the teachings of uh, the Mital Rebbe. He writes, in regarding to this, says, how do you compare in the Pasuk the faith in Hashem and the faith in Moshe Rabbeinu? It says, They saw the mighty, the mighty hand of God so first by you and then they first saw and then by Aminu by Hashem they believed in Hashem which we said it's Avai the Leila higher level of Avai and then Uva Moshe Avda also in Moshe so how do you compare the faith of in Hashem to the faith in Moshe Rabbeinu that's the question to us Chaim so what is the mean? what is the meaning of it so there's an explanation of the Abil uh, Mipalicha. He writes in in Pela uh, Harim in his uh, his Hasidic uh, uh, writing. He explains that the faith in Havaya de Leilo was drawn to the Jewish people through Moshe Avdeh, through Moshe Rabbein. So by they attaching themselves, connecting themselves. To Moshe, to the place of Moshe. Moshe himself was connected to a high level of nullification. He himself was, was nullified to God on a higher level. They connected themselves to where Moshe is nullified to. Why Moshe Rabbeinu is called Avdoi, Hashem's servant. In this passage it says, they believed in Hashem and Moshe Avdei, Moshe the servant of Hashem. 
So this, they connected themselves to this level. Avdoi Eved servant is a high level of Bitu. Whatever the master says, he does. It shows the, the, the essence of nullification in Hashem. By them putting themselves aside and connecting themselves to where Moshe is connected to, they were also elevated to this level of faith and, and bond with Avai Dalela. So we see that the faith in Moshe Rabbeinu is not something added to the belief in, in Avai. Rather, the belief in Avai Dalela, the, the high level of Avai, came to the Jewish people through them connecting themselves with Moshe Rabbeinu. It's not two uh, levels of Muna. They connect to Moshe Rabbeinu immediately, they're able to believe in Avai Dalela. They have this Muna, this faith, the high level of Avai. Moshe, uh, what is the level of Moshe Rabbeinu? Das, knowledge, and Iskashus, connecting himself. Connecting it says, Moshe in says there are seven shepherds. Suka 52. But there is explained 52b. Moshe Rabbeinu is one of the seven shepherds. And he is the one that brings emuna faith to the Jewish people. He draws down faith to the Jewish people. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu is called the faithful shepherd. Zoya Chalik Beis writes over there, Moshe is called the faithful shepherd. He is a, a faithful shepherd that brings and sustain the faith within the Jewish people. Draws it down and sustains it. As it says, whoever is, is Neman, is faithful. And Hashem says it on Moshe Rabbeinu. Wherever, area, whatever he does, his Neman, his faithful, is, is believed in. Is, since he's one of the seven shepherds, that drawing down vitality, godliness to the Jewish souls. Each shepherd brings another inyan, another concept in Alekus, another concept in godliness that intensify the work of the Jewish people. Moshe Rabbeinu is called the Aimem, the faithful shepherd. Why? Because he sustained the faith, he sustained the Jewish people with faith. We said before, Faith you need primarily for Avai the Leil, the concealed Avai. For what you see, you don't need faith. You know it. So Ram Enam teaches us this faithful shepherd, the Rigai Moshe Rabbeinu, means that Moshe Rabbeinu's objective is primarily to reveal Avai the Leil, that we should have the belief in Avai the Leil, in the higher Avai. He brings to the Jewish people the faith that is concealed, sustains Knesset Israel, the assembly of the Jewish people, in this faith, to, to, for them to be sustenance, for them to be an inner chayus. So that's what it says about Moshe Bechol Basin Emenu in all in my entire house, wherever I where, whatever job I gave him is Neman, is faithful. Bechol Basin is connected with godliness, with the concealed world. That's where the faith is, something that is above seeing, above grasping, and this level he is giving to the Jewish people. And that's why Moshe is Das. Moshe is the level of Das. In general, that, that his generation was called the generation of, of knowledge. Moshe Rabbeinu was the epitome of Das, of, of um, knowledge, which knowledge leads to Ishabus, to connection, creating a connection. And Moshe is the one that creates the connection of the two levels of Shema Vai. That even Avai, the, the Yud Ke, Vav Ke, that is above, the, that is concealed, even that Avaya will come, will be revealed, just like the lower Avaya is revealed to us, higher Avaya will be revealed to us. That's what the rabbi said in Tractor Bocha 30, 33b. He said, If 
famous pasuk, famous teaching, Moshe Rabbeinu says to the Jewish people, now we saw, listen Jewish people, what is Hashem is asking of you? Try to summarize it to one thing. He says, all Hashem wants from you is to fear Him. The Gemara says, is it really so? This is it? It's so easy? Just fear God? Is, is fear is so simple? Moshe Rabbeinu says to the Jewish people, that Hashem is asking you something small. What is it? Just to fear Him. The rabbi said, Yira is milta zutrosi? Is it something so easy? Really? And they answered, Ain, yes, for Moshe it's something simple. For him it was something very easy to have Yira. So now we can see from, from, from what we just learned, why we can see why fear was simple for Moshe Rabbeinu. It was something easy for Moshe. The idea of Ira, meaning to have Ira is because of the revelation, because of the things that you see. A saga, you have a saga, you have understanding, you have seeing, it leads to fear. But like we said about the king, that when he reveals himself, people fear him. When he's in his palace, nobody cares. Or no one fears him. So to Moshe Rabbeinu, it's something small, you, because he constantly exposed to revelation of godliness. Why is he called Neman? Because he was constantly with faith that is even above the revelations. And when you are attaching yourself to a higher level, like Moshe Rabbeinu, connected himself to Avai the Leila, the supernal name of Avai, then to him, uh, the the fear itself was considered nothing. He's already in the, in the, to, to, is already involved with the next level. What is the next level? Moshe Rabbeinu is, a, is, is involved with Avai the Leila, something that is above revelation, the faith, trying to bring it to the Jewish people. So to him, Yira, Yira is something, uh, something little. And that's why he says it to Jewish people. What is Hashem asking of you? Just fear Him. Through the level of Moshe, the Jewish people themselves were elevated to the next level, to avoid the Leila. That's what it means by Aminu Bashem. That's what it says. We know the famous... Uh, Situ- the, the famous uh, situation or dilemma that the Jewish people were, face- were faced with is they were at the sea and uh, the Egyptians were right behind them were coming and there was nowhere to go. So those few groups uh, that uh, offer different uh, options to either to Moshe, to themselves. One wanted to fight. The Egyptians, one wanted to give in. One wanted to surrender. And uh, one said, just, just uh, kill ourselves, jump into the sea, kill ourselves. So, and one said, we have to cry to Hashem, we have to, that, that's, that's Davin. So Hashem answered, what did Hashem, Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu? All you have to do is to be silent and, and Dabo may so so tell the Jewish people to continue going. That's all they have to do. What is Tacharish and what does it mean be silent according to Chesidus? To be silent. Since Moshe elevated the Jewish people to a level that they can feel now Avayda Leila, Avayda is felt in them. So he brought them to a higher level of nullification. So their own Metzias, their own existence was not noticed, at least to them. So there he says, V'azam Tacharish because he brought them to a concealed world, what happens in a concealed world? There's silence, there's shtika. Is a prophecy, really it says about it, written by David Amalek, says it in Tilim, 
66 benor yavu baregel they will cross the naha the river with by foot shom nisme chavai so after the words hofach yom leabosha that Hashem had transformed the sea into a dry land that deals with with going out of its time Pasuk says in Tilim, Benoho, in the river they will cross by foot. And then it says, Shom Nisme over they will be joyful. Meaning that in the time of Mashiach, the Jewish people are going to have Simcha in what? In Boy, in Hashem's essence, in the revelation of Hashem's essence. Shom Nisme the Simcha that we are going to have is Boy. By whom? Referring to the essence of Hashem. The revelation then, in the time of Mashiach, will be when they will be able to cross the sea by foot. Similarly, we need to understand why does it say Shom in, in a we, we are about to, it's something that in the future we're going to have this special Simcha, not now. Similarly, in Kias Yamsuf, there was definitely in the splitting of the sea, there was also great joy. And that led to the singing of the special song of the sea, uh, as Yoshu. So Shom should have said, Shom Somachnu boy. There we had joy. So, but we learned before that in the splitting of the sea, there was a revelation of Avai Delayla. So, seemingly, they already then had laughter and joy and simcha. Ki ne'at o bizman hazeh now, at this time, lo yishach b'chin ha-simcha. In the time of exile, you don't have true joy. Sh'a simcha b'chin ha-simcha is galus. When do you have a true joy? When you have revelation. Va'at o bizman hazeh e'in b'chin ha-zo is galus. Now we don't have revelation. Ki memuna, what do we have? Faith. Hamas Esther Guf. Now why do we have uh, faith only? Because of the concealment of the body. So in the time of Mashiach is the true joy. In the time of Mashiach, when you have the complete elevation of evil and the the the, the concealment of the body will no more will no the body will no longer be a concealment. The body himself will be refined. The Jewish people will be able to receive Avaidalela innerly, not just in a Muna. Emunah is something that is encompassing. They'll be able to actually, uh, it, it will be sustained in them, it will be permeated in them, innerly. And that, that leads to joy. That would lead to joy. So in the, this time, in the time of concealment, it's not possible to have nizmi chaboy, to, to have a true joy in the essence of Hashem. Because it's concealed. And true simcha is only in the time of our revelation. Or also in love in the time of Mashiach. As the prophecy of Yeshaya, he says, "Bila moves lo netzach." Be no Hashem will eradicate or obliterate death from the world. There will be no more death. Twenty five eight Yeshaya twenty five eight says this prophecy: "Bila moves lo netzach." No longer death in the world. Ksiv and Yeshaya writes also another prophecy in. Nun base chapter 52, verse 8, he says, Ki ayn be'ayn yiru, be able to see eye to eye. What does it mean, ayn be'ayn? They'll be able to see eye to eye. So he writes, ayn be'ayn, u'bechinas amud is referencing to the concealed world. Bechinas sevkarm, the encompassing light. U'mitachal zo yisraelom, ve'amud yisgalu, she'isgalu beis ha'avoye sana. We're going to have the two revelations of the lower havaye, Lo Yutke Vavke and the higher name of Avai. So in the in the in the these uh, prophecies on the time of Mashiach, it says that the the the, re'iya, the seeing at that time and the, the the understanding would be an inner understanding of Avai the Leil, the upper Avai. The our understanding at that time will be an understanding that is above the order. Of degradation, the order of the order that created the world, the structure that created the world, our understanding will be even higher than that, um, than that order. So, 
the time of Mashiach, Tisgale Bechinazu Boilomis, the Avayda Leila will be revealed in the world in an inner way. Kilos Ksiv, because in the time of Mashiach it's written in Yeshaya uh, chapter 11, he writes, Viko Lushiva Necholim, that he will sm- he'll, he'll smite the, the river, into it will turn into seven seven uh, streams of water, seven channels of water. discuss you. He wants to say in, in this prophecy that the, the reason why in the time of Mashiach, the splitting of the river, the same splitting that they had in the time of Mitzrayim, meaning that it will be a time of transformation of, of a sea, a concealed place into a revealed place, into Yabosha, into Revelation. It, it's something that is going to take place, Laosid love in time of Mashiach. It will be revealed to the Jewish people by she's because at that time we're going to completely change the difference between revelation and concealment. Right now there is a wall between revelation, what is revealed is revealed, and what is concealed is concealed. In the time of Mashiach, those walls are going to come down. So there will be no difference between revelation and concealment. So whatever is yam, whatever is ocean, is kasi or concealed, will be revealed. Whatever is above revelation will be revealed. That's why the Prophet says, I'll be able to cross the river by foot. Shom nizmechom, lo Referring to the future, Shom, then, only then, Shom Daiko, Nizmecho Basoga, Savai de Leila will have joy in, in understanding Avai de Leila, the supernal Avaya, Mashain Kinat, Ashain Olabichina Simuna, but right now it's only in a state of Imuna, Vaya Aminu Bashem of Meshad. Kiesa, no, the spreading of the sea, the transformation of concealment into revelation, it's only in the time of Mashiach. Yes, I know the law seed when, it, when this prophecy of a Koli Sheva Necholim, Yeshaya 11, uh, 15, 16, a Koli Sheva Necholim will smile it into seven uh, streams to seven uh, rivers. It's uh, referring to the time of Mashiach. That's why it says, Shom Nismecha, but then the Simcha will be, uh, will be the ultimate Simcha, the ultimate joy. They'll be able to perceive Avai de Leilo in an inner way. It's written that now is the time to do the work, and tomorrow is the time to collect the paycheck to, to receive the reward. So it's written in the, in the Parshas Vaishchon. And the Gemara says, Tomorrow you will receive the reward. What do we need today? As we said before, the primary thing is to refrain from evil. How do I refrain from evil? I nullify, I have to nullify myself. I have to have an arousal from below. You have to want to win. And, and then you have to subjugate yourself. I want to do it, but I'm not doing it. You sit and you don't do. And we said that the root of shave. The root of don't do's is higher than the root of do's. So what do we have to do with this time? Ayyam Lasir today to do them is the Sumara. So at this time the revelation, the flow is not revealed in an inner way. So what do we have left with? Bitul nullification. You're not you're not perceiving it in your intellect. Right? You just admit that it's there. Are you agreeing? I know it's there. I believe it. But through Amshacha, through a drawdown at this time, this time, the time of exile, in a way we do, that we agreeing to it, we're admitting to it, we are nullified to it, that would lead to the ultimate revelation. And that we'll be able to say, Shom Nismichom. Veloch and Omu that's what the rabbis said in the Gemara, in Baba Kama, and also written in the Zoya. Rabbi said, Someone that doesn't bow down, when we say, when we govern the silent prayer, 
and the prayer of Moedim, we bow down. Not completely on the floor, we, we bow down a little bit. So it says someone doesn't do it, is not going to be resurrected. Someone that doesn't bow down on in Moedim, he will not be resurrected. So we see that the ability to marry to this revelations, you want to marry the revelations in the time of Mashiach, in the time of the resurrection, it's, it's, it has to do with you. And what, what is the, and primarily what the Gemara says, Korah B'moidim, Moidim is the concept of nullification. You prostrate yourself, you nullify yourself. There are two levels. Is Bhina Oido Uvracha. What is Oido and Vracha? Oido is that you nullify your intellect and you're agreeing, you're saying the truth is the truth the truth is the truth, even if he doesn't understand it. And this uh, this situation is only when the, the uh, there is no revelation. Bracha means that, you, that there is revelation. So Hoido is a state before it actually comes down. Bracha is already when it came down. So it says, And this is the order how Avaidalela comes down. Trilo, it all starts with Sumera, refraining from evil, then doing good, Asetov, Sumera, Asetov. The, the don't do's and the do's, the hain and the love, the love and the hain. This time, now we are capable of drawing down a vayda leila through a door, agreeing to admitting it's there, but that's the beginning. It says the beginning of feeling that there is something higher, there is something supernal, something above you, and it cannot be revealed. We're thanking you. But through this Avaido, then comes this, if you do the Avaido of Haido, of thanking, admitting, agreeing, believing, that leads to ultimately Bracha. What is Bracha? The ultimate, complete revelation in an inner way. And that's what the Rabbi said. In the time of Mashiach, it would be there would be a new drawdowns. It, it, what we're going to have in time of Mashiach, everything is going to be revealed what is concealed now. So it's, it's already here. It's just concealed. And the time of Mashiach is going to be revealed. That's the meaning. There's no truly new revelations. New Hamashiachas, new drawdowns. It will be a revelation, a new revelation, but not a new drawdown. It's meaning it's already here, just need to be revealed. The one who is not, is not bowing. In Moedim, he's, meaning he's not in a state of Bittu. He's not in a state of Hoido, of thanking. He's unable to bring a Vaidalelo at this time. He's not doing it. So then, he's not, what does it mean? He's not going to be resurrected. He's not going to merit the revelations of the time of Mashiach. So this Hamshach, this flow, this drawdown, is being done through Tshuva and Maisim Tov, Tshuva and Gudid. Tshuva means to refrain from, you saying, I no longer do what I did in the past. I'm going to refrain from doing all these things. Sumera. And then you have Maisim Tov, Maisim Tov. So nullification, you're creating the letter Yud above, and then Maisim Tov, you're creating the letter He, the expansion above. That's what the rabbi said in, in the Mishnah in Ovis. Chapter 417. It's better to have an hour of tshuva and good deeds in this world. It starts with tshuva and then good deeds. Then the entire life in the world to come. Seemingly you can ask the question, but the world to come is, is maybe better. Because that's where the reward is. The time of, that's the paycheck. Time of getting paid. How is it possible that the avoid will be better than the reward? The world, the life in the world to come is associated with the lower avai. 
the lower name of Avaya. Avaya de letat. Beyud nivroil, mashainken, tshuva maisen jav. When it comes to tshuva and good deeds, shaliot nas bechinas avaya de leilo. You can reach avaya de leilo. That's why it's better to have tshuva maisen jav in this world. Because here you can tap into avaya de leilo. There you are limited to avaya de letat, the lower name. Over here you can tap into the, to the supernal name. What is the ultimate revelation? Was when when you you are able to bring Avai the Leil the supernal Avai in a revealed way. V'dav kali de b'chinas Moshe and this primarily done through Moshe Rabbein. So he said, "Avaminu b'Hashem Moshe Avdu." Gilu b'chinas Avai the Leil nifal de b'chinas Moshe davka. The revelation of Avai the Leil is primarily being done through Moshe Rabbeinu. V'lochin ksi vayikro Avai Avai vayikro. And when it comes to the 13th attribute of mercy, Moshe Rabbeinu says twice, Hashem, Hashem, Kelrachum Rechan. And this reference to Moshe Rabbeinu, he's the one. She Moshe Kuru Mamshik Me'avai Delayla, Avai Delayla. Moshe is the one that calling Avai Delayla and uh, draws it down, brings it down into the lower name of Avai. Show Psik Taime, because Hashem, Kama, Hashem. Psik Taime. And through Moshe, originally it was two separate Avai. When Moshe Rabbeinu is able to put it together, the lower Avai and the and the upper one. So there's two ifanim, two ways. One Avai de leelo, mamshich b'chinas me Avai de b'chinas Avai de letat to the psik time. One that you bring from Avai de leelo to Avai de letat through a comma in the middle, through a separation. That's what's happening now. Uh, the Ravai, the Leila, the supernal Ravai is not revealed in a, in a visible way. It's only a Muna, faith. That's why there is a Psik Taimah, there is a Kama. And the second way is the way of the Laosid, the ultimate way in, in, in the world to come. What, what is going to happen in the time, in the time of Mashiach? Avai the Leila will be revealed in 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 a soga mamish in a way that you can a tangible way that you can perceive it. How much more so that the law of I will be revealed in a tangible, clear, vivid way. So the in the time of Mashiach will be no psik time, there will be no separation between Hashem Hashem Kelachu Vachan when we say Hashem Hashem will be one. In the time of the splitting of the sea. It says Pasha Bishalah, as Yoshu Mayshu Ne Soil, Ashiru La Shem, ki go go because I'm discussing to the Hashuha. Says the Losha in the expression go ki go i go. It's referring to Isnasus, to exaltness. So there's two levels of within Isnasus Ali Lomus and Minusum Rum Betsam. They have Hashem is above the world, and that he is completely above and aloof in the in his very essence. Go, go, two uh, levels of revelations. Two a dikshukha, as the Zara calls it, a mountains of darkness. Because it's so, it's so uh, uh, concealed from us, calls it a uh, amadiskasio, concealed world above us. But Moshe had the capability to elevate the Jewish people to the point Vayashiru, uh, that they sang together. Yoshir, it says Loshin Yochid. Yoshir is singular. Moshe Rabbeinu by himself sang and then causes Ubenei soil that they were all elevated. We find the primary ability, power to come to this it's through Moshe Avde. He is the Mechaber, is the connector between the higher Avaya and the lower Avaya. This is the last point. This is the last point. So, B'nai Sol, now try to picture it. The Jewish people at the splitting of the sea suddenly exposed to the highest uh, levels of, of revelation. It says, meaning they now figuring out even Avai the Leil, the supernal Avai. Says they didn't want to move. They they found themselves in 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 such a spiritual revelation. 
that they didn't want they didn't want to move. So it says by Moshe, the Moshe had to force them to get going, he had to push them to to leave uh, the sea, to get out of the sea, which was dry land, but to get out of that uh, area. Shanisum and the Sea of Yamsuf, the traveling from the from the uh, Sea of Reed from Yamsuf was Baal Koch was against their will. Vayavu mid Barshu, and then they come to mid Barshu, a name of a desert. Shu Olosh Reiv is Galus, because some of these Galus. It says Shu is also an expression of seeing of revelation. Amadis Galus of the revealed world. So Moshe forced them out of, of the, the Yamsuf, of the Sea of Reed. Yam is a place of concealment. Avai de Leilo, that's, that's the level that they reached, supernal name of Avai. That's what they reached in the splitting of the sea. And afterwards, they are going into Midbar Shu, they are going into Amadis Galio, they are going into a place that is revealed, but this is already within the confines of the world, within the limitations of the world. And then they reach a place called Maroso. They come to Midbar Shu. And now they have to deal with the world. It says that they, the, the place there, Maroso, was called Maroso because it's bitter. The water was bitter. So, with, which means that when it comes to the revealed world, you start dealing with the, 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 the uh, world. What is the world? The place that is associated with the tree of knowledge, good and bad. And there is room for the other forces to nurture also. That's why the water was bitter. It says about the attribute of Malchus. It comes, that it goes into the lowest places to give them life, even giving life to the impure, to the impure powers. And the Jewish people suddenly faced with this. They are unable to elevate it. So what does Hashem do? By Yerira Avaya Eitz, where it's a Chaim, Moshe comes to, uh, Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, here, take this Eitz, take this tree. Now I'm giving you a power from Eitz Chaim. If you see that you can deal with the tree of knowledge, they're dealing with a situation that is associated with the tree of knowledge, good and bad, Having they're being challenged by it. Hashem says, okay, here's the, by Yoreu Avaya Eitz. It says in, in Parsh B'Shach, Hashem is giving him eight. What is eight? Eitz Achayim. He gives him a piece of wood, a, a, a branch from the tree, from the tree of life. The mixture of good and bad comes from the tree of knowledge. But on the other hand, Eitz Achayim is completely good. There's no mixture of bad. In, so therefore, in order to sweeten the bitterness of the, the water, Moshe Rabbeinu needed to use the, the tree, the tree from the tree of life, this piece of wood from the, the tree of life, place where the outer forces have no grasp in it. And right away, all the judgments were sweetened and the water became sweet. All the 42 um, travelings and encampments that they had in the desert was in the same on the same idea, Hashem Keneged, Shem and Beis are connected with the name 52, uh, 42, which represents an elevation from one level to the next. Every encampment, every stop that they had in the desert, representing Aliyah, they are now ascending from one level to the next. Chesed, Chesed, that's where we start to count the Omer, right after, on the following night, Pesach, so uh, Thursday night, Wednesday night is the Seder, Thursday night we start to count the Omer, representing this, we're starting the journey of, of elevating ourselves from one level to the next, like the 42 journeys that they ended, had in the desert, elevating all the Midas, all the attributes, So, uh, which is 49 in total. Level of kindness within kindness, and then Chesed Shebegvura, all the different combinations of the Midas, 7 times 7. And that's why their traveling was one time in the morning, one time in the evening. So as we explained before, the time when the Jewish people were in the splitting in, at, the, at Yamsuf, in the, experiencing the splitting of the sea, 
they were on the highest level. Aliyah Gedoyl, now they are uh, connected with Avad Delayla. And afterwards they are descended to Midbar Shul, to a place of revelation. A place of revelation means that uh, they are now dealing with Amadis Gali, with the revealed world, which is on a lower level. And then they descended even further from Midbar Shul, from a place of revelation that goes into a place of bitterness. And then there is another descent, Vayavor Elema, and they come to Elema, a place where they had to, uh, 12 wellsprings of water, Veshivim Tmorim. So they go from one place to another. And similarly, all the 42 uh, encampments and travelings to voyages that they had were in a state of ascending, descending, ascending, descending. Uh, why? Because the 42 voyages that they had in the desert and corresponding to the Membeis, the Shem Membeis, or in the supernal name of Membeis, that is comprised of the seven attributes. Kefishi called Achas Ve'achas Chul Mishesh, how each one is, is comprised of six, not seven. We're leaving the, the attribute of Machus out. So you have Membeis. So traveling is associated with Chesed. The Jewish people had the Leah. And traveling the, the voyages that were associated with Gevura, they had descent. And similarly, this was the concept of each Masa, each traveling was associated with a different Midah, with different attributes. And that's why some of the travelings were starting, started in the morning and some of them started in the evening. Morning represents Chesed. And evening represents Gevua, darkness, severity. But nevertheless, even the this, even if they descended in their traveling, it was for the purpose of ascending. And even descending after the ascending is in order to get to a higher elevation. So if there is a decrease, it's for the increase. And if there is a decrease right after the increase, is in order to get to a higher increase, to a higher elevation. And that's why all the 42 uh, voyages that they had and encampments were really ascending from level one level to the next, even though it, in the reality it might going from Midbar Shu, from a place of revelation to Moro, to a place of bitterness, but nevertheless it was a, in total, uh, the whole aspect was for elevation. The objective was elevation, and that's what they did. They were elevated from one level to the next, and everything was done by Moshe. All the, the encampments, ascending and descending, was all done by Moshe. Moshe was the Das, has within a Das, Elin Das, Tachto, and the lower knowledge, the, the upper knowledge, and, and, that, that, and that's the reason why he had the capability of elevating the, the Shomish soul, the Jewish souls, to the ultimate elevation because of the dust that he had in him, the knowledge that he had. And he had the ability to, to impart upon them the ability to come down, to deal, to be enclosed in, in the things that they have to elevate, which is associated with the tree of knowledge, good and bad. And that's why in the time of the splitting of the sea, when he split the sea with his staff, Alidesha Koas Ematev split the sea in, in, with his staff. He himself had to force them out of it. To take them, he brought them to a highest level and then bring them down. Then again, ultimately to elevate everything that we have to elevate through Teromitsus. So Buchim Tiu, we saw from this mimer the the concept of a vaidal leilo, vaidal tato, what does it mean? Vairu is saw the side of the the Jewish people saw the mighty arm. The point is, that what do we have to, what do we have to uh, take from all of that? We get to, we get now to the time of Pesach, time of the of, of Kriyas Yamsuf. We have to understand that will be a time that all the concealments will be removed, and the. The only reason for concealment is for the intensified revelation that would come afterwards. 
and the ultimate purpose is to deal with, to be occupied with Torah mitzvahs at this time now when there is concealment and only afterwards we are able to go with the 42 encampments where you have aliyahs and yeridahs, that's the time of exile, we'll ultimately will come to the greatest and highest revelation, revelation of Avai Delelo, and in an inner way, the supernal name of Avai will be revealed in an inner way. Buchim Tiu, in about uh, 45 minutes, we'll have uh, the uh, Daf Yomi class. Thank you all for uh, watching and listening. Shukor.